OK, here we are with our target Windows 2008 domain controller. Um, what we're going to do is just run through installing the ADMT tool. Um, I'm actually putting it on the domain controller, but um, you know you, you can put it on any 2008 server. Um, OK, as you can see, I've copied across the, um, the admin setup already, so let's just run that. There we go. So just click next to accept that, agree with that. Uh, we don't want to join the uh, experience improvement program. And then we just let it run for a few minutes. Okay, as you can see, it's asking for a database store. Um, just for this demo purposes, I'm actually just going to use the local um, SQL Server 2005 Express. You can, of course, use another SQL store if you want to. Um, you know, with larger domains, it certainly makes uh, sense to do that. You'll get far better performance. But we're just going to go with the, the Express edition for now. There we go. Okay, we don't want to import any data. It's a new, fresh install for this demo. Um, so we'll just accept that. Click Next. There we go, and it's done. So we've now got the ADMT tool installed. So what you should see is it should be on your administrative tools menu. There we go. So what we'll do now is we'll move on to looking at uh, actually running some migrations. So before we migrate anything, let, let's have a look and see what we're actually going to migrate. Um, I'm currently on my target domain, so this this is our layout. We have our target.local, uh, we've got a migration OU, and below that we've got computers and we've got users. Okay, so let's have a quick look at our source account, our source domain. This is our, our source.local um, forest, which is a, a 2003 forest in this instance. You'll see below there we've got a corp. Uh, environment below there we have computers and below there we have users so we've got our, our demo user which is Andy Pandy so what we'll do is we'll we'll flip to a workstation there we go we've got a Windows XP workstation and we'll log on as our Andy Pandy users user as you can see we're currently logged on to the source there is a uh, two-way trust in there to the target domain but of course we've, al we've also turned off uh, SID filtering as well so we can log on. There we go. So you can see um, we've got some things on the desktop just so we know our profile's correct. Okay, and if we have a look at, um, I'm trying to remember where things are. OK, 
Okay, let's give it a word. What you'll see, for example, is that I do have a local profile set up for this user, so we'll look at the effect of, of the migration and the effect it has on, on the profile as well. So what we're going to do is migrate across both Andy Pandy and his computer and um, just look at the effect. Okay, what we're going to do, uh, we're going to run a migration on our demo user and our demo computer and I'm just going to show you the effect um, of moving things across in, in its entirety rather than just moving a, a computer account. So if we have a look at our source domain, we're, we're actually on the domain controller for our target at the moment but in the um, users of computers here on the left, I'm actually looking at our source. What you'll see is there's a computer called Comp001 and there's our user, Andy Pandy, and we're going to migrate him to our target uh, environment, which is over here on the right, into computers and into users. Okay, so let's have a look, quick look at our client, which is this one. I'm going to log in as Andy Pandy. There we go. You can see that he's got his own profile, um, he's got some shortcuts set up on the desktop, so it has, it has its own local profile. There's no roaming profiles in here. So I'm just going to log out of that user. Okay, and we'll jump back onto our um, target domain controller and we'll look at the migration tool. There we go. So what I'm going to do is just fire up the Active Directory migration tool. Now obviously there's a number of prereqs that you have to meet in terms of access, that sort of stuff, but I've done all that. Um, I really just wanted to show you how simple the overall process could be. So the first thing we're going to do is migrate the user accounts across. Okay, so we're going to do a user account migration. Okay, uh, we're going to select the source domain, which is source local. You can either have it on any domain or you can specify the domain controller you want to use. There's our target. Okay, so we've done that. Next, we're, we're going to select users from a domain. You can feed uh, a number of users into this, which if you were going to do a bulk migration, that, that's the way I would do it. Um, so you could migrate a whole group of users in one go. Okay, I'm going to select an individual user, which is our Andy Pandy user. There we go. Okay, it's going to ask us where we want to put it. Now I want to put it in our migration OU under users. There we go. Okay. Now we're going to generate complex passwords and I'm going to save them on the desktop. There we go. Now you, you can actually migrate the passwords, but there, there's a service you'll need to install in the source domain to enable that. So so that's another option for you. Um, but in this instance, just for the demo, I'm going to generate some complex passwords. So we'll click next on that. Okay, so we're going to decide the state of the account once it's migrated. So I'm going to set it as enabled, and I'm going to set it so that the source account is disabled after one day. Or rather, the account's going to expire. I'm also going to set it to migrate the user SIDs, because that, that's quite important, because that actually brings across our SID history. So we'll select that. We'll get a couple of pop-ups now. There we go. It'll say that we have to have auditing enabled, so we'll say yes to enable it. Okay, it'll say the same for the target domain as well, so again we'll enable it. Um, there's something about the groups as well. Again, there's a number of prereqs that you have to meet, but that, that's not really the point of what I'm trying to show you here. So I'll, I'll just let it create all this stuff. So the next thing I need to do is give a username and password for the source domain. There we go. Okay, and we're going to update the user rights, um, and that's all. Okay, because I, I don't really have any groups in anything in my migration um, demo here. So we'll select that, click next. Okay, we don't want to exclude anything. We shouldn't have any conflicts because it doesn't exist in the um, in the destination. So we'll say do not migrate source object if a conflict is there. Okay, and it now should go off and migrate our user. There we go. You can see that one user was examined, one was copied across. Okay, now if we have a look in our target domain, 
Let's refresh. We should now see our Andy Pandy user. And if we look in passwords, we should see that we've got a complex password there. Now, I'm going to log on as this user, but what I'm going to do is actually just reset his password, just so I can to remember that, that complex one. Okay. Now, if all we do is migrate the user, and let's log in as our user now in the target domain, what you'll see is while the user's been migrated, we'll now get a fresh profile. We won't get the profile the user used to have. There we go. As you can see, it's a brand new profile. Now, that, that's not great from a user's perspective because what happens is um, basically a user's now going to be in the situation where they, they don't know what's on their desktop, their drive mappings might be wrong, um, shortcuts are going to be missing. If they've saved anything on the desktop, they're going to lose that. So what we're going to look at next is how to migrate the actual machine account as well and how to actually move the computer across in a way that maintains profiles. So what we'll do is just look at that piece now. So I just need to roll this machine back. So um, let me just cut out and do that and I'll come back to you.